everyone, Bean Chow here, and we're back on another episode with our Royal Enfield Interceptor 650. And on today's episode, we're going to learn how to take the battery out, the airbox, and maybe something else. Who knows? Let's see how far we get without, we get in, without getting in trouble or breaking something on this bike. So, let's get to work, because this is Bean Chow's Garage. On the Royal Infield Inter Interceptor 650, you need your key to pop open the side cover. Once you get that removed, now you can work on getting started on the uh, the side cover removal and the seat removal. The seat pretty much has that little peg that we talked about. Pop it. Again, we pull up, pull back, and take it out. Pretty straightforward. Now, I'm gonna do my best to use the provided factory tools that come in the with the bike to do all the work. I wanna see how far I can get without using any of my own personal tools on this bike. And I just wanna see how far we can get. So the next step is that we need a 10 millimeter, which comes on the 10, 12 millimeter wrench. And you need that to remove the bolts right here on the side. These don't go on very tight, so you just need to break them loose. And you have three, three 10 millimeters on this uh, piece right here. So it takes the side cover off. And we'll get to the next part. So the next thing is we need to get to take this front cover off. And this, I mean the left side cover. And this one comes off with a little Allen bolt that's right here next to the ECU. You'll see it right there, the little silver one. That's the only one we need to take off so this cover comes right off. And it provides you with the tool that you need to do that. This side off, pull straight up. That gives us full access on this side of the bike. And now we have access for both left and right side of the bike. Now, we have to remove um, a couple pieces. It shouldn't be that much to get to the battery removal and then to the air box. Um, well, not the airbox or the intake. Uh, the battery is kind of one of the bigger things I want to learn how to remove on this bike because I'm going to get ready to pull the battery out and upgrade it with a lighter weight battery and in a pretty much a, a gel type. Much longer life on battery charge, uh, better crank, everything's just better about it. So, with the provided screwdriver attachment, you can remove now the uh, the intake if you want to go there, but the next thing I'm going to do is remove the battery. Which is accessible on the other side. This is a little tricky because it's not very uh, accessible. With the Phillips. Let me see if I can try it with the 10 mil without grounding it out. There 
There we go. That was actually not that bad. Once I got that loose, I bolt it. And now the power is now terminated off the bike. Put your screw back in so you don't lose it. Okay. Next is the ground side, right over here. Again, not enough space for a screwdriver, but you got enough space for that little 10 mil that they provide you with. Just enough so you can get it going. Broken loose enough to have a spot right here. Now, motorcycles are always tight fits, so don't be all angry and stuff because nothing fit right. <laughs> It's kind of normal. Okay. You pull the negative up and out. All right, so now that I got the negative removed and the positive, I should be able to pull the battery out my side over here. So I'm going to show you guys on this side. One time. So right here, you'll see I have extra wires in here because I have my other, I have a battery tender and my, um, and my, what's it called? The, um, the heated grips in here but you'll see this little strap right here you're gonna want to pull down on it pull up and then that should give you full-blown access to the battery okay and then you got to remove this little uh, spacer right here this little locking tab and again they provide you the tool for that Allen wrench, and it's the second largest one in your kit. the factory battery so I don't know what is this, what it is holy crap it's heavy um, so it is an AGM it's actually not a crappy battery it's a not a liquid it's a glass mat so advanced glass mat so these are like deep cycle this is actually a very good battery I don't know why people complain about this style battery uh, but these are great AGMs are really good batteries so but I heard a lot of stories that they, uh, they tend to have charging issues or they tend to fail a lot sooner than later. So we can dig a little bit deeper and we can try to remove more stuff. We can remove uh, these two screws right here, which will detach the wiring from this air box from here. Um, we do have to remove the battery tray, it looks like it. Yep, the battery tray needs to be removed. get uh, access to the air box here to remove the air box if you guys want to remove it 
Um, I don't think I need to do that. I don't know if I want to go that far. Uh, there's a screw right here. You guys can see that. So we have a screw here, a bolt here, two Phillips here. I'm gonna work my way over. A lot of this stuff is glued on, so my my fear is that if I yank, start yanking this stuff out, I'm gonna damage something. So I'm probably not gonna yank the airbox. I want to, I really do wanna pull the airbox out just to see how the airbox goes in and out on this bike, but it's not that easy uh, from what I can see. Um, if I'm looking at this correctly I got this one bolt here these two screws there's some wire here looks like there's an allen wrench holding it there's a plate underneath Okay, just a stopper. So this battery tray is mounted on the back of this. You got a couple screws here, and then you gotta do the two, the two clamps on the air box, and then you gotta unmount a couple sensors to pull it out. And the air box will come up through here, it looks like it. Now the only issue that I have which is I, what, I, what I, I think is what's gonna prevent it from coming out. And I already see the big problem. So what Royal Enfield did over here, this is kind of my, my biggest issue with some of these bikes. I noticed this with other bikes that I worked on. And I'll show you guys, let me unravel here. Now, You'll see here, there's a bunch of glue adhesive. That's to create a seal. That's to create an airtight seal so we don't have a vacuum leak inside the system. If you notice, if I take these two clamps off, so the clamp that goes here and here for the air box, you see here, this, this whole thing here is like the same exact diameter here. So I can get the air box to here, go down and yank it out, but this will hold me back. It'll be stuck right here. And what might happen, from what I can see, this is solid plastic. Um, I will have to bend the crap out of these and probably damage the seal and create a, uh, create a really bad vacuum leak in the system. So I'm not pulling the air box out, that's for sure. Uh, from what I can see now, I definitely don't wanna do that. But, again, it's not much. This air box here is held uh, it's mount on the bottom. It's stabilized by a rubber grommet. It's this, these two screws and the one up top here. That's that's it. That's all that holds this air box in place. There's a sensor on the other side. You have the breather tube right here. Uh, this battery tray is held down by two four bolts. There's two more on the other side. Two here, two on the other side. And that's what holds it down to the bike. So you can remove all of this and you can get to this point, but. I don't see a way that you can pull the air box out without damaging the, uh, the actual intake, which is kind of annoying um, because what if, what if this does go bad? What if uh, you need to actually service your uh, throttle bodies because there's something wrong with them? Maybe you got sand, maybe you got, you got to pull the air box out and you got to be able to get this out and have extra room to work with. That's not going to be possible um, in this scenario. So not a big fan, not a big fan of how they designed this. But again, it's probably just the way they engineered it and it's just what it's gotta be. I uh, just figured out this is the crankcase breather. Obviously that's a starter. Um, and that's how we pull out the, the, uh, the battery out of this bike. Now we're gonna work our way back over to the other side, uh, on the other side of the bike and I'll show you guys the uh, air intake system. So on here, um, it's held together with three screws. Super easy. 
I know I did a I did another video on this portion, but I'm gonna show you guys again. Because it's really, really easy to get to. Again, I haven't done anything without using only my my uh, factory toolkit. Okay, guys, everything's been done with the factory toolkit. I haven't used anything special yet at all. That's mine. So those three screws come out, and then you'll see this little plastic notch. That's the alignment. You'll see the intake portion right here of the actual uh, intake system here. Now there is a company by DNA. They make pretty much a some type of kit to get rid of this pretty much and it's just a bracket that goes around here and holds the filter in place and allows for more breathing this is the actual uh, intake filter it's pretty cool it's massive um, the DNA one pretty much is the same thing but just a high flow uh, material and then um, slide it back in and then there's a bracket that goes around here that you put on here and holds it in place and that's it you don't use anything else and that's your intake system you get rid of this entire whole assembly and you have better flow I don't know if that's true or not I mean this this thing is pretty cool it's designed pretty neat um, more likely it's designed this way uh, to prevent water from going in. So if you live in an area that rains a lot or has the tendencies to get water or ride through puddles, this is probably going to prevent your bike from seizing and sucking up a bunch of water versus just having a giant hole with a plastic cover on it. Because um, the only thing that's protecting your system from here is this mud flap right here on the back. That's it. There's nothing here to protect you from splash coming up. I'm going around there's just nothing there's nothing on this area that's that's just what it is it's all you know exposed to the elements so that's what these covers are for on the left and right so this bike again goes out in the weather and gets wet you have potential damaging the engine by sucking up some water don't know how much potential damage but it is it is something that you guys have to consider if you guys are going to go that route um, I live here in California so I don't think it would be that much of a concern because I don't ride in the rain in general. I just don't like riding in the rain. I think it's scary and I don't. I just don't want to do it. <laughs> I just don't have the, uh, the cojones, the balls to do it, honestly. I just don't. Um, I'd rather just ride and be safe. And I, just, I just don't want to fall down. I've already fallen down once and I broke my wrist. I don't want to do it again. Um, but that sums it up and that's just again what's super cool about the kit uh, the toolkit from Royal Enfield I was able to do everything pretty much with the kit that they provided me I didn't have to buy special tools I didn't have to do anything I can do it all with the, the little toolkit that sits on the side and it worked phenomenally so uh, thanks for tuning in for this episode of Pinchao's Garage and how to remove your battery it's stupid easy anyone can do it with the provided tools and it's easy to put right back I didn't have to move much out of the way or create any type of damage or scratch anything. It's just really easy. Um, so thank you for tuning in. Peace out. You guys have a wonderful day. I'm going to put this bad boy back together. And as always here at PTL's Garage, we're going to break. We're going to fix. I'm going to repeat. 